Power 92. We are number one in the streets. It's Power 92, 92.3 in Chicago. Your boy DJ Nafis. It is such an honor right now. This is She's so beautiful. Let me tell you a story about how I found out about her record. Queen Nausea. It's called Medicine, right? And uh, we do Total Request Tuesday and Thursday. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The girl called in the static. She was blowing up all the lines. She said, y'all need to play Madison. Y'all need to play Madison. That's I'm love. Like, yeah, she, she, straight love. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. man, played the record, you know, got it in there. And now I get to talk to you face to face. Thank you. Welcome to Chicago. Thank you for playing my record. I feel honored. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you out here, you get Never thought in. I would hear myself on the radio at all. Well, you know what? When you got great music, you know what I'm saying? Because we don't play no whackness over here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got great music or just, I mean, the support. Now, I love people when they support. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You supporting the artists, people calling in genuinely. Yes. And they want to hear something. We'll, we'll play it. My fan base is crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is nuts. It is definitely nuts. And you're in Chicago because you got a meet and greet today. Yeah. Yep. You at, at the DTLR um, Villa, Chicago. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Now, uh, where are you from? I, mean, I am from Detroit, Michigan. Okay. D-Town. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you make your way over to Chicago. Now, let me ask this. This is a serious question. Um, you know, did the water problem in Flint affect you or anybody in your family? Or was you close no, to No, no one. I mean, nobody in my family um, lives in Flint. So. Okay. It didn't affect us in that way. Okay. I'm not saying that I don't feel bad for the people it did affect, but what I'm saying is like it didn't really. Actually, I don't even know if we were living in Michigan mm-hmm. at the time because I had moved to Houston from Detroit, mm. and then my family moved to Alabama. Okay. Yeah. This is spread out then. Yeah. All right, all right. So now most of the thing, everybody really knows about you from your vlogging. Yeah. You get on there and tell your whole life. I know, right? <laughs> that's a lot. And that's why people have... So much to say, because I, I tell my whole life, but it's okay. I'm just transparent, and, you know, I just take, I take what comes with it. Now, what what gave you the courage to just start vlogging and want to put yourself out there? Like, what is what? Like, what it was started, the move? Um, it, it started way when um, I was in my last relationship, and we were doing, um, like, the cute Instagram couple stuff and, like, mm-hmm. you know, going viral, things like that. And uh, we were trying to find a way to come up, and so we trans transition our um supporters from instagram and facebook all over to youtube we made a channel together um built a brand and then you know things went wrong in a relationship so i start seeing red flags i start uh building my own platform which is our, which is when i created my own channel back mm-hmm. in april mm-hmm. and um so i had already been kind of used to it you know mm-hmm. kind of used to everything already being on camera um before i even started my own channel so right. I was already comfortable. Okay. You know. Yeah. And, and just like you said, coming up, you know, you're doing your thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, you know, get some Google AdSense money and stuff yeah. like that. With, but you know, you know what? I want to just say this. It's not. I didn't start doing YouTube. Um, I didn't. Well, what I started off, you know, to capitalize off of it and make money, of course, mm-hmm. you know, because I wanted to stop working a nine to five. Actually, I had got fired already. So I did stop okay. working a nine to five. Okay. But, um. I just wanted a way out of poverty. You know, I was struggling really bad. And I was on Section 8. I was on welfare. Like, I know how all of that is. So um, we were trying to find a way to get up out of that. And so it wasn't just for the money because I had grown to love it afterwards. Mm. Yeah. And that, for me, that's hard. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I guess I feel like I'm a private person. Yeah, it's different. I'm, yeah. I'm, like a, I'm like more of an open person. But the crazy thing is, like, I've become more private mm. now. Now? Yeah. Why? I I know, like, I don't want to backtrack, but, like, I still want to be transparent to my supporters. But, like, I just feel like now that, like, certain things has happened in Mm -hmm. my life and so many people have said things and had opinions on things, like, I just kind of want to keep some things private now. Like, I've learned. Yeah. I mean... That's a, that's a, my next question would be is how do you deal with the trolls and the people who just make shitty comments? Um, I used to honestly look at every comment. Well, I ain't gonna lie, I still do. Mm-hmm. But um, I used to look at every comment and try to argue back with everybody. Mm. And like, I just realized that I can't fight all these people. Like, they, it's gonna be more and more coming, and then like I'm gonna just get exhausted, and I'm gonna be worried about what people are saying, and stressing myself out, losing sleep. Mm-hmm. And so I just um, I just came to the realization that um, I can't do anything about what people are saying. And it don't matter if I'm doing the best in, in my life. Like, if somebody has something to say, they're going to say it. 
So as long as it don't stop my grind, my shine, I'm good. Good. I like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Stay positive. Yeah. You know, keep your energy up. Because the internet could drive you down, people. No, I, th- oh I always God. say the internet is undefeated. Like, it always Man. wins. They be making funny memes out of serious stuff that go yeah. on in your life. And, like, you just really have to, like, you really got to deal with it. If, if Like, it's kind of like what I asked for. Mm-hmm. You well, well, at least you you taking responsibility for that. You know what I'm saying? You know what you wanted to do. And you, yeah. You're doing it. You're doing it. Now, you were on uh, American Idol Season 8. Uh, talk to me about that experience. Did it change your life? Did it help? Did it? No, it didn't help at all. Okay. It didn't change my life. <laughs> okay. It honestly was just an experience. Okay. Yeah. And do you think that added to, you know what I'm saying, the whole song making? Nope. And, no. Not at all. Nope. It was just something to do. I always, I've been singing since I was three years old. So I did American. Well, okay. The reason why I did American Idol that season was because a few seasons before that, when I was 15 years old, I went. Just to go, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't make the first round. Okay. But I'm the type of person that like to outdo myself and compete with myself. So if I didn't make it then, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm coming back and I'm going to make it this time. So I went back when I was 17, going into 18. And I um, I just wanted to prove to myself that I could go higher in the rounds. So I actually made it to the top 50 before they start um, choosing people live on live television. Mm -hmm. So, um I just kind of proved to myself that I'm, I could make it further. Of course, I didn't go to the top rounds, mm-hmm. you know, on live TV. Um, and that was a little discouraging, but um, that honestly helped me start just writing more music. I honestly had started writing more gospel music mm. after that. Gospel? Yeah. yeah. So you are you're a Christian, yeah. right? Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, I strongly believe in the blood. Lord. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's hard to talk to people about God sometimes because... You know, this game is so whatever it is, you know, it's like it's it's negative energy and uh, spiritual warfare. You know about spiritual warfare. Yeah, I do. It's, you know, people I, I feel just... like it's it's hard to talk to the youth about God now because they probably feel like more so judged. And, you know, they don't want to be judged and things like that. But really, like, um, you can reach the youth with love and, and get them to God with love and just show them, you know, right. that everybody make mistakes and things like that. So, so, so I'm going to share this with you because I never really shared this in public. And mm-hmm. this is one of the reasons why I really don't <clears throat> do social media. When I finally found out about God, find out who Jesus was mm-hmm. and everything, and I was reading about the time of the end and we in the last days, and, and it said uh, men would become lovers of themselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know what? I don't want to go down like that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I really want to try to like be, you know, all about God and be for him. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And that's one of the reasons why I really don't do social media that really that big yeah. right now because I'm just not into like me like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and how do I mean like considering that, you know what I'm saying? Like how do you, you know, build up enough and oh you tell me you're doing it. You're trying to be private right now, but you you know, you wanted to do more, but you, how do you build that up to like get out here and want to put yourself on a vlog every day like that? How do you build yourself up for that? Like, I know it's easy now, but at first, what was that energy you had to, you know, channel was, to get that way? It was okay. It was first, like I said, it was motivation to get out of poverty. Absolutely. I was broke. Mm-hmm. I needed to do something. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't live the same lifestyle. I had a son, a baby. I remember being in the house. Not my own, but staying with somebody else with no heat, no hot water, wintertime, engine going bad, couldn't afford a car note, got fired from a job the second day. So, like, I really had to push. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And then after that, I just started to love it because I I, I had um, grown to see, like, how many supporters I actually had and how many people liked me. Mm-hmm. You know, so... Um, I still go on to this day because, like, my fan base has gotten bigger and bigger mm-hmm. and bigger. And, like, they, like if they've been with me since, like, they've seen my whole transition. They've seen, like, how I was from here and I'm here and I'm here. And it would be unfair to them to, you know, just leave them yeah, out the now. Way, right. Mm-hmm. You know? So, All right, so I just keep it going. Well, I'm happy you're doing it. Medicine. That song. Mm-hmm. Where did it come from? Who hurt you? Um, my my ex husband. I know that dude did. But yeah, he hurt me. He hurt um, you. I just um, like I said, since we were relationship relationship goals on um social media and YouTube, you know, people have looked up to us as a couple, and like he started, you know, doing making poor choices, and you know, um, 
getting exposed for certain things. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I was just really embarrassed time and time again. And, you know, I don't want to mention other things. But right. honestly, pain. I just got fed up about stuff. And when I was in, uh, when I was in the relationship, I was, like, recording some songs. Mm-hmm. But, like, with him just for fun. I never, like, really got to record any songs by myself because I didn't really have the support. Mm-hmm. I ain't have heavy support like how I do now. Like right. I, I got heavy support now, you know. And um, when I finally left and got fed up, I just took whatever um, I felt and I put it into a song. And um, it was just for confirmation to all my supporters why I left, mm. you know, because they had no longer seen me at my house anymore on vlogs. Mm-hmm. They seen me at my brother's house. Um what else? Like, they just, they seen that I was only working on my channel and not the the couple channel anymore. Mm-hmm. So, people was wondering what was going on. So, I was like, I'm just going to make a song for y'all. And and, and it and it became like this. Yeah. This and then it went further than you do. flower, you know, fire. You know what I'm saying? That's because like, my, my supporters, like, my fan base is so big that they promoted it for me. I didn't even have to do it myself. They promoted it for me and it went, like, outside of YouTube. And that's the thing. Like I said, you know, we do Total Request Tuesday and Thursday. We don't even play, like, slow music. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We be playing, like, you know, if it's it's got to be chill. But, yeah. you know, that, that song right well, there. Well, I don't know. You don't, you don't think medicine is chill? But, I mean, it's 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 cool. It's like chilling. You know what I'm saying? And then at the same time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, that's like, for, I guess we just be hard at night. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'll probably, I'm, for me, for me and Ferris, I'll probably, be, I'm the person who plays like all the R&B stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of ladies listen to our show. And then sometimes you want to break up listening to Slide and yeah. shoot somebody and all this other stuff. You want to, you want to mm-hmm. chill out and be cool. You know what I'm saying? But I, I thank your supporter for, you know, calling yeah. up here. I and, thank him too. I wish I knew their name. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, you got to be on this. And we looked it up. We tried to we found a clean version for it and everything. Yeah. I think you just said one um, curse Honestly, on uh, what clean versions did y'all find? Because I don't really curse in my music. I mean, right, it was just, it was like, I think you, did you say shit? No. I don't curse you, in none of my music. None of your music? It sound like shit. No. I don't never curse in any of my music. Oh, well, I'm the only person that's cursing right now. Shit, shit, yeah. shit, shit, shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't curse in none of my music, so. Okay. When when people say they need a clean version, like, it's there already. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. You know, sometimes people, when they edit music or they say they're not cursing or, like, everybody who call in to us, they say, yeah. play my song. I ain't got no cursing in it. Nah. And it'd be, like, hidden words yeah. in there. You know, that's okay, okay. Well, that, it's good to know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I thought I heard something. Maybe it's because of all of the music that I listen to already. No, you good. Okay, that's all right. All right, now, did anybody discover you on the singing tip, you know what I'm saying, to pull you to Capitol? I mean, well, Capitol came in. How, when did they come in the picture? Okay, so... um. Okay, so I met my friend Claire, okay. and we started collabing on YouTube videos and things like that. We became really, really good friends. Mm-hmm. So his sister, I asked her, could she um, do some merchandise for me for my YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. And um, come to find out, she had many, many more plugs. Um, she had worked with people in the music industry like before like her clients and things like that. So I asked her, could she plug me with some of them? Because I was ready to, like, I seen how medicine was doing. Mm-hmm. So I was just ready to um, see what I could do with it, you know? So... Um, we talked a little bit and then we just came to the real- realization that since I was so close to her brother that I could trust her, you know, because mm-hmm. if I'm close to her brother, you know, she's not going to do anything to hurt me because, you know. Right. Um, so she ended up being my manager. So she went through my emails, which I never went through. Mm-hmm. Seen many label, um, labels coming at me that I never answered because I know what to do. Mm-hmm. And um, she set up all those meetings for me with almost every label like in the in the country and um we came across no id capital was actually not one of them mm. um that we set up a meeting with until we met no id okay Shot just, town. yeah you know okay. he came off real cool real um down to earth and um uh, we were supposed to go home to new york that day but our flight got canceled because it was bad weather in new york mm-hmm. so it's really it's like it's almost as if it was actually it was god because since Absolutely. our flight got canceled, Capital hurry up and put their staff together, like overnight, so we could have a staff meeting the next day. So mm. instead of me going back to New York, we had a we had a meeting with Capital. That's what's up. Yeah, and um, that was the meeting that changed everything. Like wow. 
even even going to other meetings before that, like that was the one that made me feel like I was about to get married. Mm-hmm. You know, like <laughs> I cried after the meeting. And then not to mention no ID to top it off. He's a whole legend by himself. So. Right, right. Yeah. That's what's up, man. You know, and look how God works. You know, yep. you wanted to get out. You started doing that. Mm-hmm. Here you are with the biggest yep. record in the country right now. That's why I don't regret a thing. Like, I don't regret anything that went on in my life because had it not been for, you know, this pain or this mm-hmm. tribulation in my life, I wouldn't be here. So I don't regret nothing. All right. That's what's up. Now, uh, Scissor, I mean, what is this your first song, like, or, like, you, you've done more music? No, I've done more music. I just mm-hmm. really didn't. Like, take it seriously. Yeah, I didn't put, push it out. I didn't, you know. But well, now you're about to get the comparisons because they're going to put you in the arena with SZA mm-hmm. and her. And yeah, I love people. them. I love them. Them are actually my favorite. SZA, her, Kehlani, mm-hmm. Ella May. I love all of them. Okay, okay. That's what's up. Now, is your inspiration as far as uh, any older artists that you listen to, like, who are you inspired? Uh, who inspired you? I love you? me some Whitney Houston. Okay. Okay. Um, I love anyone with a strong, powerful voice. I just, I really don't discriminate. Like, whoever has good, I might not even be a big fan of the person, but if they got a song that I really like and it touched my soul, mm-hmm. I like it. That's what's up. That's so, what's up. All right. You know what I'm saying? Now, are you going to do an album? Yes. After my EP drop. Okay. When is Which that? is J- July, the second week of July. How many tracks on there? Five. Five tracks, okay? Five good old tracks. Five good Gonna ones. Gonna make it feel like it's ten. Good, 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 mm-hmm. good. And producers, who are you working with? No ID is the um, is the the biggest the the most known producer. Um, and then I have a, a low key guy. His name is El Jefe. He's from Jersey. Mm-hmm. He just hit me up like on Instagram when I I needed some beats. I put on my story. And usually I don't look at people's stuff, but I check my email anyway, and I I happen to like the beats. So I was like. Oh, and then it's another guy um, named Rob Grimaldi mm-hmm. from um, New York. He's a real cool dude. He does great production. And then um, Click and Press, a studio called Click and Press. Okay, okay. So all those producers will be on my, um, not album, EP. Okay. Now, as far as the music, you know, this is your breakout song, this this Queen record. I mean, yeah. Queen, not Queen, but uh, the Medicine. Uh, Medicine record. Now, are you going to do more music like that? Or is it going to be like you do some... some I mean, trap R&B type stuff, some Tory Lanez type stuff. I'm trying to stay stuff. away from the trap R&B because that's what everybody else do. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to bring back real R&B. Mm, like ballads and like... Yeah, like, but but don't get me wrong. I could have some stuff y'all can groove to and bump to. Mm-hmm. But like, um, everything I write is from... I write all my music, by the way. Just let y'all put okay, that out there. Okay, that's what's up. Um, everything I write is like from experience. Everything is true. Mm-hmm. And so, whether it's fast or slow, whatever, it's going to still bring you that, like, old school okay, okay. R&B vibe. All right, that's what's up. Now, um, let's, let's go back to medicine right about now. You know what I'm saying? This is a fan question. Mm-hmm. The lyrics in the song, did you, t- you talked about getting back at someone. Yeah. Have you ever gotten revenge on any of your exes? No, and the thing is, like, the song, if you watch the video, it was really a dream. Like, it's... Honestly, the song is not about us actually going to get revenge because, mm-hmm. truthfully, that's not what I'm about, you know. But um, it's about what we want to do and everything that we want to say that females are saying in their heads, but they're mm-hmm. scared to say. Like, I want to do this to you so bad. Like, how would you like it if I did this to you? Mm-hmm. But we really don't go do it. Right. You know? um, yeah. Come on, ladies. You be paying yeah. attention. We really don't go do it because, I mean, <laughs> we, we're we better than that, honestly, you know? I, and you represent for the ladies right now, and a lot of young ladies are watching you right now. Yeah. You're looking up so to I you. So I don't want them to be like, oh, go tie your man down and watch the other one. I mean, make him watch you <laughs> and the other one. Like, that was a dream. That was supposed to be a wake-up call for him. Right. You know? Um, And, I, and honestly, like, that's something I, I haven't done. And I probably wouldn't do because I'm not that kind of person. Good. Um, the only way I could get revenge is just glow up, like glow myself up. Absolutely. And then he could realize what he lost and realize that it's never coming back. Good. Thank you. Yep. Ladies, please pay attention to that. You uh, rewind Men that too. Back. Men pay attention too. Be- men too. Men too. Don't be hurting people because you know that's just you might wrong. lose someone very good, very good and helpful to you. You know what I'm saying? Don't be doing the crazy stuff. All right. Now, is there, is there one thing that you might have not put on the vlog or anything that that people want to know about you? If I didn't put on the vlog, I probably didn't want them to know. Hmm. Real like that. Hmm. 
So right now you really is on this privacy thing. You ain't you ain't finna put that much stuff out there no more. I'm not gonna say that much stuff, but mm-hmm. like just some things keep to myself. Okay. All right. Now as far as following I learned you, from honestly, I learned from my friend Claire about that privacy stuff. It's okay. Really good. It it's less stressful. And then I also watch how like Beyonce moved. Mm-hmm. How she moved in silence, like she don't respond to nobody, like she just if she, she doing and she still be living like so I wanna do the same thing. Okay, that's what's up. But could you share what Claire said to you that actually like got It's really you? not about what he said. It's just his actions. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Now, um, you got the new EP coming out. Mm-hmm. And then the album coming out. You're working with No ID, the producers, everybody. Everything is coming together. Yep. Uh, 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 right now, you know what I'm saying? I'm happy for you. You and your song, Thank Madison. you, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for coming. You'll be at DTLR today. Yep, thank you for having me. And that's... Uh, 6.30, 7.30. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, people, and this is going to be crazy out there, so get there early. Yeah, y'all. Get Come there early. Out. You know get what I'm saying? Uh, for the people who want to follow you, uh, spell your name out so people could uh, catch you. Um, Q-U-E-E-N-N-A-I-J-A. Make sure y'all please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I still will be putting out footage. Might be spaced apart, uh, spaced out a little bit, but you'll still get vlogs and things like that to know like behind the scenes of what's going on. That's what's up. Um, but on Instagram, it's the same way. It's about okay. the same way. Okay, okay. Again, thank you so much for coming and blessing my show. You know what I'm thank saying? Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have a beautiful spirit. Thank and, you. And, and thank you. Thank God for you. Thank God for that girl thank who God called for in <laughs> for your song. Now, yeah. now we know and I got to meet you face to face. That's so great. God bless you. And God bless much you. Much success to you. Okay, thank this is you. DJ Nafis on Power 92. Let's go. Power 92, 92.3 FM.